Hey there, my name is Wesley Taylor. I graduated from UNCSA School of Drama, class of 2008. And it looks like they've set up a, a bit of a suspect board for me. Let's take a look at some of these clues and uncover the mystery of my career. Huh? Shall we? Okay, only murders in the building. Current job, actually. Uh, one more week of shooting. Uh, although I don't know when this is gonna air. What was it like teaching Meryl Streep the chorus line audition combo? Um, wild, just totally wild. It was a big group scene. There were a lot of bodies in the room um, and there was a friend on the opposite side of the room who I was trying to entertain and I started just doing the chorus line audition dance to make her laugh from across the room. And suddenly, uh, Marty, uh, uh, Martin Short, sorry. He has me call him Uncle Marty. What are you gonna do? So Marty sees this and he starts yelling, five, six, seven, eight, and then suddenly I'm fully performing in front of hundreds of people, uh, which just tickles Meryl Streep. And she says, oh, you'll, you just have to teach me that dance. And I taught her the first 12 counts of a chorus line. And inside I was, but on the outside I was very cool. And once, I had taught her a, a little stretch. Um, Selena Gomez whipped out her camera and filmed us doing it. Shall we do another one? I think we shall. And... <laughs> Kids for character. Oh wow, a real deep dive. There's a Tom Selleck at the top, he was the host. Have you and Selena talked about Barney? You know what, we haven't. And it's been something I've needed to talk to her about to be honest. She, as a lot of you will know, got her start as a child actor, performer uh, on Barney. And uh, I actually did a lot of uh, the singing vocals for the kids on Barney and Friends. Um, but no, we have not discussed that. Thank you for reminding me. I'm going to bring it up on Monday, tomorrow. What's next? Smash! What was it like to apply your musical theater training to television? Yeah, this was a first big job on TV. You know, I had done some commercials and a, um, a guest star on a soap opera, but this was like my first big recurring role on a big budget network show. So much of the cast of Smash were from Broadway. So I felt very much in my element and among my tribe. You know, I didn't feel like, oh, how am I gonna translate this other medium to, you know. It felt actually pretty organic and natural. What do we got next? Woo! I like this one. Summoning Sylvia, which is now available on demand on Apple TV, iTunes, Amazon Prime, Vudu, Spectrum, Comcast, Google Play. This is my first feature film as a co-writer and co-director, and it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. The story of Summoning Sylvia is a gay bachelor party gone wrong. It's uh, four gays in a haunted house. Uh, it's all about the assumptions we make about each other. There is a straight ex-marine brother-in-law that crashes the proceedings. Hauntings and homophobia ensues. It's a 75 minute hilarious romp. It's not too scary. It's spooky. I've never slept less and worked harder and been more proud of what we created. Oh, I, there's a question. Tell us your favorite pickle moment on set. Two of the cast are pickles. Uh, Nicholas Logan uh, graduated from School of Drama in my class, 2008. The lead of the film, Travis Coles, graduated our same year as well, but in the School of Film. And he's actually acting now. Um, and he's a wonderful actor. Um, and then we had three or four pickles in the crew. Most notably, uh, our cinematographer, Matthew Rovito. I had just a lot of moments on set of, there was be, you know, a best boy or a grip who uh, was telling me about their experiences having just graduated from School of the Arts in 2017 or something. Sharing those stories on our lunch breaks or, or whatnot was like really special. And it felt really rewarding for me to, to provide opportunities for uh, people in both schools. Okay, and let's go... The Two Princes. I loved doing this. I, I did it during the pandemic um, 
I started doing more voiceover stuff during the pandemic, of course, and uh, it was a really rewarding thing. The Two Princes is a, a queer uh, young adult uh, love story. And I played Prince Darling. What do I love most about voice acting? You know, it sort of fulfills a childhood dream, doesn't it? I mean, we started watching animated movies first and, you know, my first Broadway show was Beauty and the Beast. You know, a lot of theatrical um, origins for me were animated and so I was signed by the Diamond Agency in Orlando, Florida at the age of nine years old and I started this career as a kid doing voiceovers. I love it because you don't have to worry about what you look like. How's that? You know what, you could, cut, you could cut all of that and just use that just last use that. <laughs> Next! <laughs> the Spongebob musical. This was a joyous year of my life, playing Sheldon J. Plankton. Um, I auditioned for it years before I got it. Didn't get it. And in the meantime, I moved to Los Angeles and totally forgot about this. And I got a call when I was living in LA from the director, Tina Landau, asking me if I would come to New York for the final reading of SpongeBob before Broadway. Now, that's essentially an audition, a week-long audition. Everyone in the cast had their offers for Broadway. And it was my audition. So all the cast, they're like, while we're like reading this thing together. So it was nerve wracking, but I delivered. And at the end of the week, I booked! Um, which was the second time that I moved to LA only to move right back to New York City for a job. The question is, did you get the Krabby Patty secret formula? You know, in the 10 months we were on Broadway before we shut down, I was unsuccessful at getting the Krabby Patty formula or hypnotizing the town to get into my escape pod so that I could have world domination. <sighs> my only hope is that now that it's licensed and schools are doing it, that some young whippersnapper plankton will finally be able to find the secret formula. Arr! <laughs> <laughs> All right, I didn't see this one. Indoor Boys! This is a digital series um, that I started making with Alex Wise, who is now still my creative other half. And we were both a little creatively stifled and we started writing sketches together and um, next thing we knew it, there was a first season of a web series. And then we followed that up in New York City with the second season and then the third season. And um, it, you know, it, it opened a lot of doors for us, to be honest favorite memory collaborating with Alex Wise. Um, over the span of those three years where we were working on Indoor Boys, uh, we found a voice together as writers. What I didn't realize I needed was an accountability partner and was someone to bounce off of and really challenge my ideas. Our strengths and weaknesses just complement each other's. Uh, he's made me a better writer, I've made him a better writer. Uh, and it's been really fun to like take a look at the early work and see how it's evolved and see how we've uh, gotten better. Drum roll. Ah. Tales of the City. Tales of the City was really significant for me. Um, it was about four months in San Francisco. This was the first time, honestly, as a, as a queer gay man, I, I found a fraternity of other gay men. Things are different now, but when I was at School of the Arts, I was one of two people who were openly gay in my <laughs> year. And uh, I didn't have like a brotherhood. I didn't have other people that I could be mentored by or, or you know, look up to, or there wasn't really a lot of visibility like there is now in the media. In 2011, I was very fortunate to be cast in this beautiful show that premiered in San Francisco, which is a, obviously a beautiful gay city. The most memorable moment of the musical, hmm, well, there it's twofold. There was one moment that was really fun and scary for me, and that was when I showed my butt. I had to do a strip tease and show my butt and it was my first bit of nudity on stage, and uh... <laughs> don't use that. 
But for real, the most impactful moment for me in the, in the show um, was a solo that Mouse sings uh, called Dear Mama. It's a coming out letter to his parents uh, who happened to live in Orlando, Florida. Um, there was a lot of parallels between me and Mouse. It was just a very personal thing for me. And doing that every night was really therapeutic. Uh, and it looks like we've got some final remaining questions up on this little map of Winston-Salem. First place you go when you go back to Winston-Salem. You know, I go straight back to campus. I go straight to Performance Place and those studios up there on the, in the drama offices. And, uh, and I just, I really hope that I don't become that old man who like can't stop coming back and they actually talk a lot of smack behind his back because they're like, leave already. Like old man on campus, like know when it's time to go. And I just can't, I just keep coming back. Um. <laughs> we love the honesty. <laughs> no, um, I mean, that is, that is, that is honestly my truth. But um, <laughs> favorite thing about Winston-Salem. Leaving. Just kidding. Winston's great. Favorite thing about Winston? I don't know, cookout. We really had to stop going there in our senior year though, when we were trying to, you know, get in shape, to be marketable for the business. Take up this video. You're gonna keep that joke where I say leaving. leaving. Yeah. It's the same thing. I can yeah. say, I can say, um, what did I say? I